Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Kita Wasami. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. Thanksgiving is around the corner, you guys, and if you're anything like my family, we always have tons of leftovers. So if you never know what to do with those turkey leftovers, let me show you an awesome, easy recipe that you can go ahead and cook up the next day. Today we are going to making a keto turkey pot pie. We are using up those leftovers. It's gonna be absolutely delicious. We're gonna make an awesome pie crust for on top. It's gonna be full of flavor. It's super simple to make. So let's go ahead and get straight into the video. All right, you guys, the first thing we are going to get started on, we are going to make the crust for the pot pie because we got to let it chill for a little bit. So you're going to want a food processor or in my case, I'm going to go ahead and use my blender because I'm just going to use the pulse setting. But if you do have a food processor, you can go ahead and use that. So we're going to add all the ingredients to our blender. First thing we're going to start with, we are going to start with our flour replacement. And for our flour replacement today for our crust, we are going to go in with some almond flour. For the almond flour, you're gonna go ahead and measure out one cup and we're gonna add it to our blender. For our second flour replacement, we're gonna go ahead and go in with some coconut flour. For our coconut flour, we're gonna go in with one tablespoon and you're gonna go ahead and add that to the blender as well. Then you're gonna take half a cup of shredded cheddar cheese and add this in. Next, we're just gonna go in with a little bit of regular salt. You're gonna add in half a teaspoon. Then we're gonna add in some butter. You want it really cold. We're gonna go in with half a cup. This is one stick unsalted. And we're gonna go ahead and cut it into cubes. We're just gonna go ahead and cut it down a bit so it's easier to blend up. I like to just cut it in half and then I'll just go along the butter stick just like this and have it into cubes and we're gonna add it right into our blender. Make sure it is cold, do not have it softened. You want nice cold chunks right on top. Okay, next and last ingredient going to our dough is one egg. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and shut the lid and you just wanna pulse it until it forms a dough ball. So if it does get stuck, I kind of just stop it, give it a little shake because you're going to start seeing that dough form. So you got to make sure everything gets well incorporated. Okay, after a few minutes, you're going to see that it has formed a dough. If you need to mix it a little bit, you can go ahead and mix it. It might be a little bit easier in the food processor, but we got it done. So now we're going to go ahead and roll this into a bowl and uh, we're going to place it into the fridge. And this is the way your dough should look after we post it. It's gonna be a little sticky, you just wanna form it into a ball, place it in a bowl, and we're gonna put this in the fridge for 30 minutes to go ahead and cool down. Okay guys, in the meantime, while our dough is in the fridge for 30 minutes, we're gonna get started on the leftover filling for our pot pie. So I have a pan heating on medium heat, and to our pan, you're gonna add in a tablespoon of butter and let it melt down. Okay, to our butter, you're gonna add in one shallot. I went ahead and diced it up. All the ingredients will be linked in the description below along with the measurements. To your shallot, you're also gonna add in three cloves of minced garlic. And we're gonna go ahead and let this get tender. For a few minutes, do not let your garlic burn. So just go ahead and keep stirring it and keep it on a medium low. We're gonna let all these flavors come out. Okay, after your garlic and shallots have turned nice and browned, we're gonna go ahead and add in one stalk of celery chopped, one cup of leftover green beans diced into small pieces, and then one orange bell pepper chopped. We're gonna go ahead and give this a good mix and you're gonna let these bell peppers and green beans get nice and tender for about five minutes. Make sure you do stir occasionally. Okay, after your veggies have been cooking down for five minutes, they should be nice and tender just like this. Now this is where your leftover turkey comes in. So you're gonna add in two cups of leftover turkey. I went ahead and chopped it into bite-sized pieces. We're gonna give it a good mix. We are not letting any turkey go to waste this Thanksgiving. We're gonna make some delicious meals out of it. All right, we got that delicious turkey in there. Now we gotta add a little cream. 
We gotta get this nice and creamy. We're gonna go ahead and go in with one cup of some heavy whipping cream. Give it a good mix. Now we're gonna go in with two cups of turkey broth. If you can't find turkey broth, you can go ahead and use chicken broth as well. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and bring this back to a simmer. While it's coming back to the simmer, you wanna go ahead and season. I'm gonna go in with some salt to taste and you could adjust it at the end. Some black pepper. I like extra black pepper in my pot pie. And then we're gonna go in with some ground thyme. Thyme, I think that's how you say it, ground thyme. <laughs> and this is gonna give it that delicious flavor, you guys, that delicious homemade flavor. I love me some ground thyme. And then you could add any kind of other seasonings that you like. Go ahead and make it your own but just give it a few minutes, mix in your seasonings, and we're gonna bring this back to a simmer. All right, you guys, after you bring it to a simmer, we're gonna go ahead and give it a good stir, and you're gonna wanna let this continue simmering for about 10 minutes, and you're gonna see that the sauce is gonna thicken, but make sure you do come stir it about every two minutes so nothing sticks. All right, you guys, so after about eight minutes of my sauce simmering, you're gonna see that it has reduced some, but it's not as thick as we would like it. So we're gonna go ahead and thicken it up a little bit more. So what we're gonna go in with is some xanthan gum. You're gonna see here that it is a white powder. This is a, a natural thickener that you can go ahead and get at your grocery store. A little bit does go a long way. We're only gonna go in with half a teaspoon. You're gonna go ahead and sprinkle this around. And this is gonna get our sauce nice and thickened. Very, a very natural way where we don't need like flour to thicken our sauce. This is gonna go ahead and help it out. You wanna mix it in and then give it a couple more minutes to go ahead and thicken. Let it activate and then we're gonna go ahead and be done. We're gonna go ahead and be done with our filling and it smells absolutely amazing. Go ahead and taste, try it. If you need to add a little bit more salt or pepper, whatever else kind of seasoning that you like. All right, you see how that xanthan gum really helped thicken our sauce even more. So our filling is ready. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the heat and we're gonna set this to the side, let it cool off a bit, and we're gonna bring out our pie crust that we have sitting in the fridge. Okay, before we start rolling out our crust, you're gonna go ahead and take a pie dish and we're gonna put our filling at the bottom of it that we just made. So you're gonna go ahead and carefully spoon it. Look at that. Looks beautiful, no turkey gone to waste. We made another delicious meal with some leftovers. The whole family will enjoy these leftovers, I promise. It's nice and cold here in Texas, so these definitely come in handy. I absolutely love pot pies on cold days. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and fill this up. Okay, we put all our mixture into our pie dish. Again, go ahead and evenly spread it out. And then we're gonna go ahead and put this to the side. And this is a nine inch um, pie dish. All right, you guys, now for the crust, which in my opinion is possibly one of the best parts as well. We're gonna go ahead and take one piece of parchment paper, put down your crust that we made earlier. You wanna go ahead and keep it in the form of a ball. It is going to be kind of sticky, so that's why we are using the parchment paper. Okay, after you have that on one piece of parchment paper, you're gonna take another piece of parchment paper and put it right on top. And we're gonna go ahead and roll it out with the rolling pin, just into a circular form, so we can go over our pie dish. I swear I'm never the best at rolling out crust, so if it comes out a little funny, I'm sorry. Okay, after you have rolled it out, you don't wanna roll it too thin, you wanna kinda keep it thick. It is going to be kinda sticky, this is the way it should look. I kind of have a little clumps of butter, but it's okay. I, it gets nice and crispy. It's gonna melt down. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and take our pie dish. Bring it back over your pie dish. Now the easiest way I find to do it is kind of just flip the crust right on top with the parchment paper, just like that. Because remember, this isn't like a real pie crust. So it's gonna be kind of different. It's gonna be a little bit more to work with. And I kind of just flatten it down just like this and then the excess kind of comes off because I kind of just push it onto the um, pie dish and then we can clean off the excess. Just like that. Now we're gonna go ahead and peel this back. Do it carefully, very slowly. Look at that, beautiful. Oh, 
<laughs> just kind of stick it down a little bit. All right, you guys, as you can see, I kind of pulled back a little bit too fast and it kind of separated, but I kind of just smoothed it out with my finger. Sometimes it doesn't come out perfect, you guys. I'm not perfect. Just do it as carefully as you can. And the best advice that I can give you is carefully pull back on the parchment paper and your crust should come out perfect. But now we're gonna go ahead and preheat our oven to 350 degrees and we're gonna pop this in. Doesn't this look absolutely delicious, you guys? It is, it's gonna come out really good, so I cannot wait. Okay, we are popping our pot pie in the oven at 350 for about 30 to 40 minutes. You want it firm and golden brown. Look at that nice golden crust, you guys. It is almost done. I got a few more minutes left, but it smells absolutely amazing and it looks so delicious all right you guys my pot pie is officially done baking look at that we got a nice golden crust on top it's nice and bubbly i had it in there for 35 minutes if you like it a little bit more crispier you can leave it in for the full 40 minutes but it looks super good it smells even more delicious but we're going to go ahead and let this completely cool a little bit because if you cut it in while it's hot it's just going to be a hot mess so go ahead and let it cool down and then we'll cut right into it all right, you guys, I let my pot pie cool down. It's officially time to cut into it and we're gonna give it a little taste try. I never know where to cut the pot pie, so I'm just gonna start in this corner. I always wanna go in the middle, but that's bad. Okay, we gotta get that delicious golden crust. We gotta get all that filling with the leftover turkey. Look at that creamy sauce. It looks absolutely delicious. All right, you guys, time to test try this turkey pot pie. Let's go ahead and get the crust, the turkey, the green beans, and all the veggies, and let's dig in. Mm. Oh my god. I gotta take another bite. I have no words. This crust is so good. It's so crispy on top, so buttery. The turkey has awesome flavor with the green beans and the bell peppers. Just the right amount of seasoning, you guys. Nice and creamy. This is the best thing to make with your Thanksgiving leftovers. So if y'all happen to make it the day after Thanksgiving, go ahead and post some pictures on my Facebook page. I would absolutely love to see y'all enjoy it. But I really hope y'all enjoyed this awesome recipe for those Thanksgiving leftovers. If you did, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see y'all on the next one.